Did you know that YouTube has a built-in editor in YouTube Studio? Now, by no means is it a video editor where you can make videos from scratch, but when it comes to the pinch, you may be able to do some basic trimming and other features using the YouTube editor after you've uploaded a video. Jump on over and we'll have a look, example of the sorts of things you can do using the built-in YouTube editor. Now you can see here that I am in YouTube Studio and I'm currently in the content section. And I'm gonna pick this video here that's unlisted, just an old sort of trailer video for a live stream. And what I'm gonna do is just jump into it so that we can see the options where we can change all the things about this video. And then you can see here, we've got this section here called editor. So we're gonna click on that. Right away, you can see there's a timeline. You can see I've got a viewer and you can see that there's a video and audio track on the, this particular video. But just at the top here, you can see there's a number of actions that we can take. Trim and cut, blur, audio, end screen and info cards. Now end screen and info cards, we're gonna cover that in a totally different video because that's a feature that by and large you would mostly use and change during the upload process or that you can do that in a separate way apart from the editor. This is just one way of actually uh, changing or updating or adding uh, end screens and info cards. So we're gonna skip those and we're gonna look at the more practical features, which are, we're gonna work from the bottom. So firstly, audio. If I click the plus button on the audio, it's gonna give me music to choose from the, from the YouTube audio library. Now this is all the free stuff that you're able to use without penalty. Now what you can do is hit the play button here to preview the track, see what you wanna do with it. Uh, it tells you the runtime. If you hover over the YouTube logo here, it tells you that it's a YouTube audio library license. And then you can dive in for more details there. Now attribution required. We can use that track in any video on YouTube. So we're gonna just, I'm just gonna pick that. So I'm gonna go add. Now if I go add, you can instantly, it adds this blue bar, which represents the music track. Now obviously it's gone from the start to wherever the video's ended. We got some options here. There's a, a mix level here and then a three dot menu. The three dot menu again lets us look at the license info or allows us to remove that track again. Now if I click on the mix level, I can actually pull that down to be like background music so that if there's speaking like there is on this video, you'll be able to sort of get a mix going on. Now I can hear what that sounds like by hitting play on the player. It's very rough at the moment. I had it turned down pretty low already. Every time you adjust it, you see a little uh, spinning wheel here that says that it's thinking about it. I'm gonna play it again. So it's basically added like a backing track. Now, if I left that full uh, volume, it would have just overpowered any audio. So it doesn't remove the audio that I've already got in there, but it does add a backing track. So if you need to add a backing track in a pinch, this is one way of doing it. The next option we're moving up from the bottom is the blur. Now I've been asked about the blur. So we're gonna have a look at the options in blur right now. So we're gonna click the plus. Now we get two options immediately. One's a face blur, where it's gonna do like a face track and try and blur, identify and blur all the faces for you. And then there's a custom blur. So let's look at the face blur first, cause it's at the top. First you can see what it's doing is it's scanning the video for faces. So we're gonna let that scan and we're gonna come back and see what it's come up with. Okay, you can see that it's come up, It's picked my face because I'm in the video, I'm the only face in the video. You can click on it or click select all if there's multiple faces and click apply. So now that's gonna go through and start adding a blur over top of the video. So let's see how well it's done. And what you can see here is I can grab the this here and let's hit play. And you can see it sort of misses me in that one point there. But most of the rest of the video, it's done a fairly good job at tracking my face because I am moving around, the camera's moving. It is a little bit tricky and it seems to pretty much track that and at the end it sort of just fades out. But let's find that part here. 
See here, it sort of misses the point. What I can actually do is come and grab the blur and reposition it just for that section. Let's see what happens now. Just fixing that one section has fixed and pretty much kept my face blurred the whole time. So that's a win, that's face blur. So you can um, tweak it whilst you're still in the editor. Once you've saved your changes, you can't come back and do that tweak again. We're gonna look at the second option for the blur, which is the custom blur. As soon as I hit this, we get a few things, a rectangle blur, an oval blur, and then we can have the blur track an object or be in a fixed position. So in this case, I'm gonna leave that as rectangle. I wanna cover up this text because maybe Creative Breakfast Live isn't any longer on Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern. So what I can do is make this blur sit over top of that information there. I don't want it to track object. I want it to be fixed position because it's in the same spot all the way through. And then you'll probably see now that if I play that through, it just affects the blur box all the way through from the beginning to the end. Now I could, if I wanted to, decide to blur out everything there and not just the date and the time. And so the blur is there, easy. And with everything that we're doing here along the way, if we click save, it saves the changes. You don't want to do that until everything is good and the way you want it. Okay, finally, the main purpose that you might want to use this for is trim and cut. So if we click on that, we instantly get this bar at the bottom where we can grab it and drag it to adjust the start time. And we can also adjust the finish time. So that's one way of doing it. Now, another thing I can do is maybe place my cursor there click new cut and so what it's saying is I want to take out this section in the middle can't really move it but you can slide the beginning and end point individually so I just want to take out that section and then click cut that'll remove that sections from the video so it's a very basic trim and cut feature Tr top and tail the end or pull something out of the middle they're the two options you got and you can add multiple cuts if you need to take multiple things out so you give a false piece of information or something that's changed or something that shouldn't have been in the video, then you can quickly go and take that little portion out uh, using the cut method as part of trim and cut. Now what happens when you uh, make a change to a video like this, whether you use the trim, the cut, or the blur, it actually makes a what's called a new version of the video. The video to you looks like it's the same video, but you've just like edited it in the back end of YouTube, it's allocated a, a, a slightly different video ID. And so it can affect other things on the platform in regards to how it points to that video. Say you've somebody's made a short off that video. Once you've edited it, it loses the link because it now has a new video ID. So these are things you have to keep in mind. It's like, do you really need to trim it? Is there something important that you might lose and can't undo? Things like that. So at any time you click save changes, after doing an edit of a trimmer cut, a blur, adding audio, and so on, you're going to um, be effectively giving it a new video ID. So keep that in mind because it can affect things like um, short sampling and you know, edit, edit into a short and different features that are available. It is certainly not an editor for making videos from scratch. It is just to help you in a pinch to trim or blur something that maybe should have been in the video and so forth, so it gets you out of a pinch, uh, even replacing audio. If you maybe have had a copyright claim on an audio track and then you need to replace it with something else, then it's gonna use a form of the video editor to allow you to do that. Let me know if you have any further questions about the built-in YouTube video editor. Have you got any other tips that maybe I have not covered in this video? Make sure you comment it in the comment below. And we're going to dive into more YouTube Studio features soon. If you want to check out more YouTube Studio tips, then check this one out right here. Well, this is Doug, and I'll catch you later. Subscribe to Doug Hughes and YT.